An accidental star is what you may call Ronald Susilo. Born in Indonesia, Susilo's journey to becoming Singapore's number one player began with his academic pursuit. How I came to Singapore was actually, is, I know there was a tournament before that in Singapore. It's an inter-club tournament. So my club was one of the Indonesian clubs that was invited to play in, the, in, in that tournament. Uh, so we sent a team there and I met with uh, my ex-guardian who was an ex-ACS uh, boy. He discussed with my parents whether uh, any, you know, whether I'm interested to, to come here to study and play for the school. Of course, my parents were delighted with the, you know, with the idea because they know that the school system here is, you know, is very good. There were no plans for me to join the national team when I was studying. Yeah. Uh, basically, I just concentrate on my studies and represent the school in badminton. That's all. Yeah, so it wasn't like, you know, if I join ACS, then I can go into national no, no, there's no such thing here. My plan was to become a doctor if I were to continue study, my studies. After I played in the first few rounds in the Japan Open, uh, I, I, I realised that, you know, I was really in the peak at the time. I don't know why. Somehow my, my, you know, my strength, my speed, everything was really, really, you know, at the best level, I would say. So I believe that I could go all the way. When I play in the final against Bautzen and Odisha, you know, I, I never get tired at all. You know, my smashing all these were really on the line and very, very powerful. My speed was there and everything. My confidence level was high. And I really beat Bautzen in straight set and it was really, well, surprising, I was, yeah. Just two weeks before the Olympics, something I would say tragedy struck me. La. I was just stroking with my sparring partner, warming up. Then suddenly, I feel something uh, tear inside. I just couldn't lift up. Uh, that was like two weeks before the Olympic, eh, if I'm wrong. Yeah. I thought, wow, my dream of going to the Olympic was gone already. <laughs> Cannot play. Yeah, so then we, as, as we of course, straight away sent me to, you know, to go for a checkup, you know, and uh, it was found that my I was I, I had a tear in my labrum. Uh. But since I you know I really qualified for the Olympic, I mean I we just have to go for it lah. Probably. So we just do a bit of you know um, maintenance. I have to eat painkiller and all this to reduce the pain and inflammation and everything. He was already world number one since 2003, and every competition he took part, he either champion or runner-up at that time. See, he was very, very hungry at that time. I know that I have to be patient to play with him because as you know him, his, his, his court coverage is very, very fantastic. His physical, his movement and everything is good. But I'm not afraid of uh, his, his skill level. I mean, his strokes and everything, I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid. I mean, I still can play with him. It's just that I have to be patient. My physical condition has to be at the peak in order to play with him. That's what my strategy to play with him, you know, to be patient and everything and let him make his own mistake. You know. A few weeks after the Olympic, I, I went for surgery, then I rested for about you know, five, four, five months. The following year, the World Championship, I, uh, in the first round also, <laughs> I told my athletes, yeah, uh, there was a really bad moment, I would say. I thought uh, that was the end of my career because I knew that you know Akris' uh, injury is a very serious one and I had to lay off for very very long. After the Akris 2007, I got uh, muscle tear here in San Diego. and in fact after that the following year is supposed to be Olympic year 2008. I thought after I got this <laughs> muscle tear, I thought oh, I'm gone again. My chance of playing the second Olympic. <laughs> uh, it was during the SEA Games actually, 2007, and in December. Painkiller was my best friend, I said. During my painkiller, I took a lot of painkillers. Yeah, no choice. Yeah. Uh, and fortunately, I, you know, I could qualify for the Olympics. But of course, not in the best condition, I would say. Not in the best condition. <laughs>